All right, guys, so we're on the way back right now, and I am driving the vehicle back. Although the steering is a bit sketchy. Anytime I go over like a large bump or something, it actually pulls the wheel to the left or the right, depending on which side the bump hits. Um, the engine needs a little bit of work. I'm almost positive that it's misfiring. It still runs. You can hear it in the exhaust. And obviously there's a service engine light that's blinking on the dash. So we're gonna get it back to to home, home base. We're gonna hook it up to an OBD2 reader and we're gonna figure out what code it's throwing. But for those of you guys that can see the emblem in the back, you'll know what kind of car I got. Um, all in all, the condition, it needs a little TLC, but for the price that I got it at, this, this can definitely make us some money. So I'm gonna show you guys what the car looks like here in a second. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm gonna take you guys along with me on this journey on the way back because it's sketchy. I can't go above 70. Can you hear the engine? Can't go above 70. Just because it starts to shake, I don't trust it. I don't know. I don't know what they've done to the car. Uh, wheels and tires did not have not fallen off. I'm thinking it's got to be something suspension related, uh, either bushings or maybe even the front suspension is blown, and that's why it's it's uh, it feels the way it does. The steering feels tight, but it's shaking. Who knows? It, it could even need. Uh, a wheel balance or an alignment but we're not going to know until we take it back to the house and do a complete shakedown on it so let me show you the dash real quick so this is the dash we've got the service engine light we've got the airbag light and trust me it's not an airbag none of the airbags are deployed And we have the windshield wiper fluid. This car has 148,000 miles. It is an automatic. Gauges over here to the right hand side for oil and voltage. So like I said, it needs a little bit of TLC. Brakes feel a little bit spongy as I'm coming up behind this semi. Brakes feel a little spongy, but I mean, that could be a number of things. Maybe they need to be bled. It may need a new master cylinder. They do stop me, so I mean, I'm not I'm not terrified, but they could be better, especially since I'm used to driving electronic brakes. Speaking of a cord, there we go. Um, I'm gonna let you guys listen to the car on acceleration. So this car, full straight pipe exhaust with the exception of a muffler in the back. Listen to the way it sounds. cars off uh, Grease Lightning, or the movie Grease. So it definitely sounds like it's misfiring. Not a big deal, these engines are prone to misfire. It's either coil pack, spark plug, harness, or fuel injection. So again, I'm not, I'm not terrified of that. Worst case scenario, it's a head gasket. We gotta swap out the head gasket. So again, we're on the way back. I will check in if anything changes. In the meantime, check out the steering wheel. You guys can see, see how it's, see how it's shimmering, or shimmying. Both hands are on the cell phone. All right. And I can feel almost every bump in the road. You can see shaking up here. So, something's not up with the, something's not right with the footwork on this car. But we're gonna take it apart. We'll diagnose it together. So, let's just get back in one piece, and we'll go from there.
Welcome back guys, it is the next day and I'm gonna go through the process of actually showing you the vehicle. Yesterday was absolutely terrible weather and uh, I was just wanting to get the vehicle home but I'm gonna show you guys what I bought and uh, basically this project, it's just gonna be a flip. Um, I bought the car, uh, it has a few issues with it and my job is to spend as little money as possible to get it looking right and running right and then I'm gonna flip it on to the next person. So without further ado, let's take a look at the vehicle. All right, boys, so we have a 2004 Nissan 350Z Roadster. Um, it does need a little bit of work. As you can see, there are some paint defects. So being in uh, the Southwest, uh, as you can see, it's got Texas plates. You've got the sun baking down on it. So that needs to be corrected. Um, of course, these super ugly headlights that somebody put tint on, those need to be corrected. Uh, it looks like the wheels at some point were spray painted, so those need to be corrected as well. Uh, all things that I absolutely know how to do. Um, body wise, it could probably use definitely a good wash um, and then maybe even like a, a wax, something to cut through all of that. Um, on the other side as well, we also see the same thing happening with the fenders. And then uh, even in the even on the tail lights, again they also smoke the tail lights, which is obviously not something that I like or even care for. But you know, depending on how easy it is to correct that, um, I may correct that back to stock. Uh, on the interior, I mean, for the the year of the car, I mean, you definitely have a little bit of uh, wear and tear. Steering wheel has seen better days. Um, I'm looking for a replacement steering wheel. Something that's a little bit uh, better than this one. You can probably find them for 40, 50 bucks online. Uh, the biggest thing in this vehicle at this point is the seats. So the seats definitely have seen better days. The driver's side seat has a huge rip in it. So I'm gonna do one of two things. Either I'm gonna buy new skins and then reskin these, or um, I can just buy a set of racing seats online um, for pretty cheap that come with the brackets for the, the 350Z and just bolt them in. Um, the only downside is that, you know, obviously if there is any electrics here, which there is, the electrics wouldn't work with the new seat. So that's kind of something that I have to take into consideration uh, before I start ripping it apart. Now, the more and more research I did on this car prior to purchasing it, um, I found out that, you know, even things like this, they get scuffed and scratched very easily. If you are a Z person out there, you probably know better than I do. But all the forums that I read, uh, these are by far the most scratched parts. Um, a lot of the plastics in here, they're very easy to scratch. So I'll probably end up uh, just repainting all of these just so they look uh, pretty good. Of course, cleaning the uh, interior with wipes and just giving it a good overall scrub, cleaning the carpets. Um, but that's pretty much it. So this car has uh, 134,000 miles on it. Um, the issue with it was with the engine. So other than, of course, the, uh, the issues that we saw exterior-wise, uh, it was throwing a code, which I believe off the top of my head was a P0302, which is a, a misfire in cylinder two. So usually, I mean, as you can see, the engine's in pretty good shape. Um, they, they did a fairly good job at taking care of it. Um, I did check to make sure there wasn't any oil leaks, anything like that. Uh, so misfire can be a few things, right? Um, the worst case scenario, maybe it's a head gasket. There's oil leaking into the cylinder, which is causing a misfire. Um, the easiest thing to check at this point would be spark fuel. Um, so we're gonna check the coil pack. I did actually get a replacement coil pack. You can see there on the, on the hood there. Replacement coil pack and spark plug. So I'm gonna check it uh, by simply swapping it out real quick. Um, if that clears the issue, excellent. If it doesn't, then I'll do a little bit more troubleshooting. 
because um, it could be a couple other things that, that that's leading to that. Um, I would say easiest easiest thing now that I'm thinking out of the top of my head, possibly uh, a vacuum leak. Um, but I'd have to go chase the source. So I'm okay with doing that uh, just to get this thing back up and running again. Uh, the person who had it daily drove it for like the last six years. And just recently they started running into these issues. Um, and the lady that I bought it from did not want to put more money into it. She ended up just buying a new vehicle and she sold this one. So this particular car, uh, believe it or not, I got this car for $2,900. $2,900 as it sits um, after some negotiating. And then I actually drove it from Texas uh, back to New Mexico. So it was probably about 150 miles round trip. Um, the car did make it. There was a, a couple other things. I wasn't really worried about the engine on the way back because uh, the engine, although it was misfiring, um, it did actually run pretty strong. What I, what I uh, did run into is there's a little bit of a wobble in the suspension. So I'm thinking it's probably gonna be bushings. Um, most likely that's what it is. A lot of the guys that run this car definitely know that your lower control arm bushings go out. Um, what I noted it to, so the car felt stiff, uh, but anytime I hit like a bump or like a small pothole, you could instantly feel the suspension jerk to that side and then it would recorrect itself. So whatever it is, uh, there's a lot of play and then it goes back to normal. So uh, what I'll do is I'll end up jacking the car up um, and we're gonna take a look at the suspension. Uh, believe it or not, I mean, if I wanted to get replacement, non-OEM, but replacement like original equipment uh, from a different manufacturer, I could buy like a 14-piece kit for two or 300 bucks. So considering the amount of money that I paid for this, if I can get the engine up and running and I can get the replacement parts so this thing runs and drives like, it, like it's intended to drive, um, there's, a, there's some profit to be made here. So with that being said, let me go ahead and start the vehicle so you guys can give it a hear. Um, and you can, you can actually hear the misfire. This car actually has an aftermarket exhaust on it. I don't know what brand it is. Um, I, I didn't even care to bother to look at what brand it is because like I said, I'm not really planning on keeping this car. Uh, that's my thought anyways. But uh, I'll start it up, you can hear it. Um, I, I believe it is straight pipe back with the exception of the two canisters at the very end. Um, let me show you what those look like. So you can see here, it does have fairly large exhaust on it. Let's see if we can get underneath it. So it is actually very loud. So when I start it, you can actually hear the misfire. So let's go ahead and start it. And you guys can see everything that pops up. Hundred and forty-eight thousand miles. Volts, oil pressure. It does have navigation. I don't know if that's something that's standard in these cars, but it does have it. Um, you'll notice when I start the vehicle. Obviously, the uh, service engine light's going to be on. The airbag flashes. There is no issues with the airbags whatsoever, so it's probably either a clock spring. Um, I'm gonna try to go through the sequence of resetting that just to see if it comes off because sometimes that can be triggered uh, when there is a fault with the engine and the fluid for windshield wipers so those are the ones that stay on so let's go ahead and start this up give it some gas that way you guys can hear what it sounds like you can hear the way it's idling so that's the issue that I'm running into right now so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set you guys up on the tripod um, I'm going to go through the process of taking out the spark plug, putting the coil pack in, and uh, we're going to see if that corrects the issue. All 
right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the air intake tube. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this clamp right here. There's a 10 millimeter bolt. And then there's a harness that is connected to what I can only assume is a mass airflow sensor. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get these taken off. And I'm also going to be taking off the air filter element just so I can get this tube out loud and get the sharpers off. I also noticed that this was not connected. This was not connected to the engine or to the air intake itself. So I'll put that back momentarily whenever I have to reassemble this. Looks like there is something in there though. I found our culprit. It was a feather. So we'll get this reinstalled whenever we get this air intake system back on. Um, as of right now, you can kind of see into the throttle body. It looks like it probably could use a clean, but doesn't look too dirty, so that's promising. Harness is off. I'm just gonna put the screw back in its place so I lose it. Plug is off of the coil pack, and I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew. So there's a little bit of oil condensation on here. I don't really see any in the spark plug hole itself, but obviously there's a, there's a little bit in there. So we're gonna take the plug out, see what the plug looks like. We're also going to take off the strut tower 
just so that I can get access to that spark plug there. I've already loosened these off camera, so I'm just going to go through the process of removing them. So the spark plug actually looks pretty decent. So it may have just been that coil pack. However, like I said, because of the code that it was throwing, it wasn't a P0300, which means that it's multiple um, misfires. So I'm thinking maybe it had something to do with that hose that was disconnected, the vacuum hose. But let's go ahead and just replace the spark plug anyways and put on the new coil pack. So the new spark plug is going in now. So I did order OEM coil packs, however I did want to go to the store just to see if this would correct it. I did buy one from O'Reilly's. Um, it does have a lifetime warranty, so you know if it, if it works, great. If not, um, then I'll put the OEM ones in. But for having a lifetime warranty, again, if it ever goes out, that's fantastic. I, I can always send back the other ones. Um, so let's get this installed and see if it corrects the issue. screw that I took out earlier. Make sure to put it back so I didn't lose it. So the coil pack, spark plug, and harness are now in place. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put back this. Um, I'm gonna put the intake hose or tubing back on, and then we're gonna fire it up, see what happens. Okay, so that back clamp is on.
on. Good to go. Or we'll just say unconnect the battery just to see if the code clears temporarily and then maybe comes on or doesn't come on. Um, I also found what I'm hoping to be something that connects to the windshield wiper fluid. I'm not sure. Just a random hose. Hopefully it's not a vacuum line. It looks to be the same size. But I'm, I'm wondering if perhaps it goes down to the bottle for the windshield wiper fluid. So if any of you guys know, feel free to chime in. That would be fantastic. Again, I have not very much experience with uh, this particular type of engines, although I've worked on Nissans in the past, um, never worked on this car or this particular engine. So um, any information you guys have would be fantastic. So I'm gonna let this battery sit for about five minutes, put it back on uh, as far as the terminals go, and then we're gonna start it up. All right, so here we go. Battery is connected. Here goes the start up. check the interior. So it looks like the fault code is cleared. Um, I do need to do the sequence in order to get the airbag thing to go away. Um, obviously I need to figure out what's happening with the windshield fluid. look like there's some sort of oil burning off of the engine though. So let's go take a look at the engine. So I don't hear any loud ticking valve train issues. That's real good. Um, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna let the car run, see if I can burn off any of that excess oil. That oil could be from the other day when I test drove it and got oil all over the block. So we're just gonna let it sit. Oh, now it's coming out of the tailpipe too. I'm not familiar with Nissan engines. Um, if this was not running correctly, and for whatever reason there is oil that's burning off into the engine, could be a head gasket. Only one way to find out. Gotta get it diagnosed. But for now, it does seem to be running correctly. No overheating issues.
We'll let the car warm up. No overheating issues. Oil pressure looks good. Obviously battery looks good. If you guys can think of anything that would help me out as far as the smoke coming out of the tailpipes, let me know. Only thing that I can think of is seals or head gasket. So once this gets to operating temperature, we're gonna go take it for a test drive around the neighborhood. Since this is a private, private neighborhood, there's not gonna be any police on the road. All right guys, so the car has been warming up. Uh, the needle is just starting to move on the temperature gauge. Uh, any oil, what I believe was oil, the white smoke that was coming out of the, from underneath the hood, that has burnt away. Um, let me show you guys the temperature. Temperature is just starting to move up. Uh, check engine light is not on, which is great. Let's look at the exhaust. So it looks to be a very, very light amount of either smoke or water vapor, which I'm hoping it's not the head gasket. Um, I suppose I can do a couple of simple tests. Um, I can do the radiator test, um, buy one of those kits at like AutoZone or O'Reilly's to see if there is any sort of exhaust going into the radiator. Basically, it's just a tube, you put the liquid in there, you suck up some of the uh, radiator fluid, and if that uh, fluid changes colors, then there's exhaust going into your radiator fluid, uh, which means that you have a head gasket issue. Um, I can do a compression test just to see if one of the, the rings is allowing oil to come through. Um, that's, I suppose, like I said, the leak down test and just the pressure test. Uh, any other suggestions you guys might have, let me know. I mean, again, the car is just getting to operating temperature. Um, I can still see very, very faint bits of either smoke or moisture coming out. Nothing from underneath the hood. Uh, but I'm going to go run it right now and see if there's any sort of uh, other issues. I know that there is suspension issues. I actually was looking underneath the car right now while I was warming up, and you can see a lot of the bushings. Um, are cracked or brittle so I may end up just getting replacement suspension parts for this uh, that way whenever somebody drives it uh, it at least drives nice so let's go test it out all right guys so the airbag light is now off um, obviously I need to take a look at the the remaining fluid just to see if if there's any in there I mean the indication on here is that there's not so um, I'll put some some more fluid in there here in a second and we're gonna see what happens. In the meantime, let's go take this out uh, on the streets over here by my house and see what happens. So just keep in mind that the suspension is still a little bit sketchy. So I'm not gonna do like some crazy hardcore runs, but I do wanna take it out, shake it down a little bit, see how it feels, make sure everything runs the way it's supposed to. As you can see, the car's loud. When I was checking it a little while ago, I noticed that they replaced the headers all the way back. So some of that moisture could actually be because there's no cats. Um, it's basically just headers open all the way back to those, those two exhausts over there. So that could be, did you guys hear that clunk? That could be the reason why there is uh, moisture coming out of the exhaust pipes. So I'm gonna drive over the, the ledge again to get to the road and see if you guys hear that clunk. Oh, didn't happen. All right, so we're gonna take it on its first maiden voyage around the house. 350Z Roadster, test number one.
so I can feel everything. brakes feel a little squishy so when you push them down all the way obviously it stops but it's almost like you come to a resistance point and then it's just kind of like hard and the car gently slows itself down up so you guys can actually see what this looks like. So new thing, so now everything still looks good to go, but when I give the car some gas, watch the RPMs. Looks like it's about to die. with the AC on. Doesn't appear to be any leaks underneath the car. Look at the look at the pressure. Very, very little oil pressure. I don't see anything coming out of the back as far as smoke. So, 
suggestions guys give me some suggestions and let's see what we can do about this and now that I'm driving real slow I think that that rattle or, or I'm not gonna even call it a rattle the wobble that I was experiencing on the drive home yesterday I think it's just bad tires can you guys see how myself and the car were rocking there 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 I think it's just bad tires You can see it on screen. You can see there's like a rhythm. Oh, it almost feels like the tire's flat, but it's not. Well, we solved some issues, guys, which is fantastic. I just need to figure out what the hell's going on with the drive. I mean, this is a roadster. It's not supposed to feel like you're driving on cinder blocks. I think before I replace any suspension parts, I think I'm gonna see if I can get another set of wheels and tires on this. Maybe try to borrow some. Um, and see if that corrects that weird, like shimmy. I guess I could also check the, uh, the PSI in all four tires. That would make sense as to why I'm doing this. I mean, that's what I'm doing on, on camera is a little pronounced, but that's what it feels like. It feels like the car's going back and forth. Like, just imagine one of my tires has like a, in the medical term, like a hematoma, right? Just like a, a mass on it. And every time the tire goes through a full rotation, I'm, ru I'm running over that mass. So the, it's like I'm hitting it and then going back to normal, hitting it, going back to normal. That's what it kind of feels like. Let me do some research. I'm not quite sure if the wheels on my Accord will fit on this Nissan. Um, maybe I can find some at like a used tire shop that we can slap on instead. But let me take the wheels off. I'm gonna put this on jack stands. We'll take the wheels off. And see what happens. So real quick, I did notice that underneath where the car was parked, there's a spot. So that's all water. I mean, that's where the car was parked. So something's condensing underneath the car. And leaking unless that was from yesterday's rainstorm and as I was revving in and sitting right here in the driveway it just started to you know come out of a hole but that's it for now guys let me know what you think oil pressure is almost down to zero Let me do some research and I'll get back to you guys. Um, that'll be the end of today's video. So again, help a brother out if you guys know anything that I can do to correct this issue or to look further into it, let me know. Again, uh, this has been steadily losing pressure as the car has been warming up sitting here. Um, you'll notice that once I hit the gas, it'll go back up. And then as it goes down, It's like on the verge of dying.
So yeah, I'll do some more research. Um, again, this is uh, Fahrenheit Motorsports, and uh, this is this is the Z Flip project. So again, let me know in the comments if you guys have questions. Uh, if you can throw some suggestions in there, I'd greatly appreciate it. But as of right now, we've cleared two of the biggest issues, the hurdles, uh, which was a misfire on cylinder two, and the airbag light came off. So I'll take care of that uh, low fluid sensor in a second, probably later today. And then I'm gonna research as to why my oil pressure is falling and why all of a sudden this feels like it's gonna die after the RPMs drop. So thanks for watching guys. Hopefully you guys uh, like the vehicle uh, for 2,900 bucks. And so far I've spent in gas, transportation and parts uh, about $175. So we're just over 3,000 so far for the car. And hopefully we can correct these issues, but uh, we'll see what happens moving forward.